thank you for the introductions and uh, you know uh, as i'd like to say you know uh, panel discussions are usually best when it's diverse right from various categories people coming in from various walks of life and you know different brands agencies and platforms so i think we have that here usually what i like to call uh, a panel discussion is like a martin scorsese movie it's long i know it's longer than the keynote session that you have or the fireside uh, you know chat that you have but it's all about storytelling right these people will uh, you know we will speak about our stories our brand stories uh, it also has characters uh, very you know interesting characters i'm sure you would love to hear a lot of us you know sitting uh, over here and lastly of course there will be a lot of guns in the climax hopefully you'll avoid that <laughs> but then uh, yes uh, we're looking forward to this you know engaging session and the topic for today that we are uh, speaking on is tech enabled roadmap for customer centric success firstly i'll jump on the for, uh, on the topic of customer centricity itself i'll start off from uh, the extreme uh, extreme left uh, amit if you can just pick on this and for you or maybe for your brand what does customer centricity stand so i think uh, just to you know make it easy for everybody and for us as a brand i think we uh, when we say customer centricity it's about um, empowering the customer so that there's a lot of value addition that you do as a brand you know in the entire decision making process so i think in a way that's what we stand for awesome 2 minutes as you said <laughs> less than 2 minutes less than 2 <laughs> minutes yes. yes amit up to you yes yes uh, so i come from a vml commerce and and from our perspective customer sensitivity to be there where your customer is so a consistent omni channel experience is what uh, what it means and a consistent experience across channels and across devices across across different forums so this is what according to yeah so um we are a b2b company typically right so for us our customers are brands right like amit and all you guys uh, but you know how we redefine the customer is basically a customer's customer right so if you are able to formulate strategies technology product people in a way that makes the customer's customer successful and by that i mean we are in the advertising space giving them relevant communication being there contextually at the right time um and you know giving a uh, an experience to that customer uh, which makes our first customer happy i think that becomes a very very important uh, strategy of how we look at uh, customer centricity right it is not for us just our immediate customer it's not like hey you know siska is the customer but siska's customer is what makes uh, you know all our strategies go around ram no i quite agree uh, we are also we are also a b2b company uh, i actually asked a bunch of youngsters over here from my college that what does customer centricity mean to them right and i was so surprised when they answered that it's about personalization i mean a, a one year a, a one year mba grad is telling me it's about personalization so therefore the depth is gone to the level where people understand now it has to be personalized how do you keep customer at the center of it how do you keep the customer first and taking taking uh, akshay's uh, akshay's note ahead uh, i think it's more about how we as platforms are able to create a shared purpose so like he said for us it's not just the brand that we are working for it is the customer of the brand also so how we are bringing together uh, our ability as a tech company how we are understanding brand's objectives and delivering to those and then how does it the end meet the goals of the custom actual customer who are, is buying that product all three coming together is where we achieve the shared purpose of being able to deliver customer centric marketing that's what i think fantastic yeah so you know for me uh, the question is really a rhetoric uh, because if you see i uh, mean customer centricity is everything it's it's not what it is or what it is not uh, for example i manage a bunch of brands which are loved by uh, people lot of millions of people in this country whether that's uh, complan glucon d nicel sugar free ever youth and so on and so forth now those brands have been created over a period of time uh, 
much before I joined the organization and we continue to take that journey by being customer centric. Now that's easier said than done. What it means is that throughout the journey of the product or the brand, you are always listening to the consumer, to the customers uh, through various data points and you know many of the technology partners help us doing that or many of the uh, learning partners help us uh, in doing that. And so it's very important that right from the beginning where you are looking to create a proposition, a brand, a solution, uh, you're listening to the consumer being very customer focused. Uh, you're also listening to them when you're presenting the proposition, the idea, the solution to them, and also listening to them and, and trying to do the right thing by understanding what impact the product or the solution has created for them and therefore improving on it, building on it and doing the right thing uh, as, as you carry on through the journey over the years. So really customer centricity is everything. Lovely, lovely. Finally. Yes, Mitch. Okay, I think uh, I come from very different category uh, among all. For us, it's the very challenging to find out who is the customer, who is the buyer. So in our category, the customers and buyers are the two different things. And uh, whenever the planning agencies always give us, we also sometimes get confused where to prioritize. But as a brand, we prioritize whosoever interact with the brand. And uh, we cap them at the heart of the our business. If you have to see the customer centricity on uh, our brand side, we try to align their motivations, whether it's the buyer or whether it's the customer, whosoever going to engage with us or whosoever doing the interaction with us. And the, our strategies are to try to find out what are the new evolving trends are there. It's more than fashion, we find the trends are changing into the interior categories. So we align their changing needs. And same time, we're trying to create internal culture also, how can we solve their any kind of the changes or any kind of the expectation they have. It's easy to listen to the customer, but I think it's very hard to deliver what they wanted. But we're trying to create that kind of the culture, and that's the customer centricity. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, for us, uh, we at Bliss, uh, you know, for us, as I think Akshay mentioned, right, uh, our clients are our customers, first customers, but then via them, we are also servicing the users in general. For us, customer centricity is making our platform so robust, so strong that our clients trust us and eventually the uh, users who are seeing the ads or we are reaching out to them through our, you know, uh, various means, programmatic, etc. Uh, we are giving them the best, you know, services, best solutions, and engaging uh, advertisements, etc. So that is something which is customer centric for for us. Uh, what I'll do is from now on, I'll uh, I'll pick up one question for each of you, uh, which might be relevant for your, you know, domain or you know, whatever uh, brands that you represent, and then maybe others can also take, uh, you know, uh, take take turns in answering them. I'll start with Amit again, uh, you know, Amit Setia. Uh, what challenges do brands, maybe your brand or maybe brands in general, face in effectively leveraging technology for customer-centric marketing? And how can these, be, uh, these challenges be, you know, addressed? So I will uh, give examples pertaining to my category, which is okay. fast-moving electrical goods, because, uh, you know, when you look at um, D2C, you know, you know, offerings or, you know, mobile first offerings, the, the dynamics are completely different. Now, when you look at my category, which is uh, fundamentally offline, right? And um, all said and done, you go and buy, uh, you know, your light products, you know, from the electrical hardware shop or maybe, you know, a, a general Kirana store also. So uh, when you talk about uh, how do you leverage technology to ensure that, you know, your customer-centric marketing becomes far more meaningful and relevant, I think um, the challenge for us begins uh, from the very um, core, which is the product, right? All said and done, uh, what I'm selling you at the end of the day is just a bulb, right? So can I make that bulb more than a bulb for you, right? That's the whole challenge. And I think, uh, thankfully, technology has addressed that challenge for us because now today, uh, that one sorry bulb is actually talking to you through your applications, through your voice assistants, etc. And we call it being smart, right? I mean, like, you know, you getting 16 million colors is one in one product is something that maybe nobody imagined, right? So uh, the products have, uh, you know, progressed uh, to start with. That's one. Secondly, um, in fact, backstage we were discussing as to how um, it is very, very imperative for uh, a distribution-led business like ours to ensure that, uh, you know, that I do an amazing campaign, 
Okay, but then when you go to the counter, you realize that, oh, that product is actually not there, you know, on the shelf. And, and that's not something that you can afford <laughs> to, to sort of create for your customer because that's the moment of truth for him or her, right? So uh, a lot of logistics also needs to be uh, sort of um, given a very, very efficient spin with the help of uh, technology because what is getting produced, what is getting distributed, and what is getting displayed, these are three different things, right? And coming to the last uh, leg of the entire value chain is marketing because then I'm doing marketing, right? So what am I doing then? Uh, as I said, uh, to create a digital footprint in this kind of an environment itself is a challenge, right? So whatever little I have, I have to scale it up, look at the possibility of creating cohorts, and then start talking to you because at least then I know, uh, you know, as a person, what are you using in terms of my smart products, at what frequency, what kind of features, et cetera, that's one. And I strongly believe that uh, Technology is of no use unless and until it empowers every stakeholder. Now today, um, you know, if I'm in the position to create leads, say for my retailer partner, pass it on to him because he's geographically closer to your location, right? And then ensure that that product is delivered from his shop to your place. So that he feels empowered that, you know, basis digital campaign uh, my business prospects are not killed because typically when you look at digital uh, campaigns the fact is that more or less everything is transactional I give you heavy discounts and you go and buy it from say example XYZ platform right and then he says Mera customer chala gaya. so can I empower this you know the last person in the distribution to say that hey listen lead is delivered to you but you deliver the product so you know you also earn a your you know your share of money so I think these are some of the things that we have done uh, in phase-wise as far as product, logistics, and marketing is concerned. Again, two minutes. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else wants to kind of lean on this question? So I, I remember meeting uh, Amit, I think, five years back. And at that time, he was promoting bulbs. Now he's doing trimmers and, you know, our personal care and everything. So at that time, I know your, you know, first uh, question was, you know, on Flipkart, how can I be, you know, how can I, how, how can I grow to be the number one in, in my category? Now you are already, you know, uh, amongst the, uh, yeah, number one, or I think top two, you are? Top three. Top three. Okay, nice. Uh, I'll come to uh, Amit Gupta now. Uh, what trends do you see or foresee in the intersection of technology and marketing, and how should brands prepare to stay ahead of the curve? Yeah, so <clears throat> technology plays a very important role nowadays, and I can give you specific examples. And from the morning itself, we have been hearing about artificial intelligence that I would still put at the top. A uh, lot of use cases where you can use artificial intelligence for predictive analysis um, and also a lot to solve your customer care problem. Second, I would say uh, conversational commerce because the devices are becoming voice assistants and a lot of things are becoming, the devices are becoming smarter and therefore any marketer who is seeking for the content generation should also keep voice in his mind because in future, the voice is becoming going to become an important channel. And with that also comes a conversational commerce where maybe, maybe you don't have to use channel to sell, but customer service, a very good use case where you can use bots for the customer service. Third would be augmented reality because we had a phase of uh, metaverse not working out very well, but now you see Apple launching Vision Pro, a very expensive device. Most likely Meta is going to come back again. Geo is launching GeoGlass or probably already launched. So augmented reality is becoming very affordable and going to be going to become a very relevant in the in the future. So again, everybody should be looking at augmented reality uh, very seriously. Uh, fourth, I would still say integrated journeys online, offline, and, um, and consistent experience because you buy online, you go offline, you still have an endless aisle. The 
shop uh, or the store uh, store uh, people they have a tab where you can they can start with the journey which you left online something like that and data the fifth one the most important one amit just mentioned about supply chain i think uh, through blockchain uh, blockchain technology is very very relevant where you can use blockchain to be sure what is the footprint of your of your inventory as well as your customer data because with the privacy coming to the play cookieless world etc etc how do you give the trust to the customer that your data is being protected or is secure now you can give a lot of in the website acceptance you can give a lot of you know a, con, a lot of terms and condition but still how do you validate how do you prove a point to the customer that your data is protected so if you use blockchain technology it makes sure that you can always come back to the customer that that your data was not compromised and i would say these are the important ones and the list can go on but i would call them out as a more important one fantastic fantastic yeah. i have a point here uh, i think we as a marketer nowadays uh, there are the so many new age tax and uh, all those systems are coming but one thing is very important which we are noticing regularly for the customer the experience is very very important it's not only the technology is the final end of the product experience that's also is important so sometime we become very low sided to give the all the experience to the technologies but we forget or we uh, skip the kind of the attention is required to give the product and experience especially the nowadays is the very hybrid world people try to do the evaluation or try to search and explore on the online and whatever digital platform but they go to the offline also so it should have the experience also matters along with the technologies absolutely uh, i resonate with this because you know we are a hyper local platform right so we reach out to users on uh, in real time whenever they are going into a store or a mall or a maybe airports you know we reach out to them with the right communication real time or maybe historic as well like for example if somebody has gone to a uh, showroom of uh, four vehicle four wheeler vehicles multiple times in the last one but we know he is in market he or she is in market for four wheeler so that is something which we you know uh, tend to do very personalized and also real time and right time so that is something which you do uh, i'll come to akshay uh, next actually i just like oh, sure. to add to that uh, navjeet so i i think amit beautifully listed down all the sort of options which are out there right now and the key things which are trending but i think i'll i'll give a marketer's answer and i see a lot of young people around see what is important is as a marketer uh, you are always looking to experiment because you don't know uh, what will work what will not work and i've seen many people colleagues friends uh, sometimes myself included that we are hesitant oh maybe this will work maybe this will just a fad right and we were having some conversation around what if and to met metaverse that's fine you know uh, but i think the behavior and the having the mindset to experiment is very very critical for a marketer uh, especially given the way the landscape from a media point of view from a technology point of view uh, and and how consumers are evolving in their uh, in their daily lives is changing dynamically so i i think that thought is very very important you experiment you may fail you may succeed you learn you move on that is the only way you can give yourself a chance to have any kind of a head start you know which is what you said so fantastic you learn you unlearn and then again you learn yes uh, akshay over to you uh, on this question uh, how does a post cookie world look for you and look to you and how ready do you think india is especially marketers in india are for this shift yeah i think in our ad tech world uh, you know it is going to be one of the biggest disruptors but you know i look at it from three stakeholders in this right one up one is the brand itself then the publishers and then there is a regulatory body which is there right three stakeholders that work in unison now there's a lot of work happening from a brand's perspectives brands and advertisers have started realizing the importance of first party data for example right how important it is to build and know your customer right and hence build robust crm systems which are getting built out 
how do you collect uh, information people their customers likes dislikes uh, you know those kind of things building loyalty programs connecting the offline world to online through the crm system there's a lot of actually a lot of brands are really thinking how to collect that data bring it all in a single uh, you know view and then utilize that right that is a challenge that the, these guys are working on the second is of course platforms and publishers which are there right uh, there is a lot of uh, work happening for example uh, in building unified identifiers right uh, universal identifiers unified 2.0 etc which is basically trying to identify and you know customers and cohorts uh, across platforms uh, that is uh, something happening there is a lot of um, uh, focus on contextual advertising right content was the king i think you know contextual is the king right now in today's world when you know cookie goes away uh, how do you give the right messaging the right communication the right offer to a person when he is contextually in that uh, in that frame of mind right and that's a lot of uh, technology that goes around it and platforms are trying to build that uh, you know the tabulas of the world and outbrains of the world these guys right and third of course the regulatory bodies which is the government uh, because it is all centric towards privacy the gdpr of india right with the bill which is going on data protection uh, uh, soon right so how uh, the government is uh, you know ensuring that there is privacy and at the same time there is uh, openness for platforms to uh, do relevant advertising etc right so that th uh, what do you say the thin line between that so three stakeholders and i think from an india perspective we are going in the right direction there is a bill that will come out which will ensure that there is you know um, guidelines towards this and brands are building obviously the data that they can accumulate and platforms are working so i think india of course is going in the right direction globally there is a lot of work that is happening but uh, india definitely is taking part in that great to hear uh, akshay to, uh, spoke about first party data i think uh, another thing which marketers are lo loving or you know wanting people to do is zero party data right people want the data to come to them instead of asking or seeking data out right so that is something which also would definitely help marketers in framing their marketing you know setup uh, i'll come to ram gopal for the next one uh, what innovative tools and technologies uh, maybe for your brand or maybe in general uh, technology are currently shaping the landscape of customer centric marketing and how are they being leveraged by brands across categories um, let me start with this that why why do we even need these tools, right? Why do we need this customer-centric marketing to be, I mean, upgraded with technology, right? Uh, I think the problem no longer, there was a problem that people used to have an attention span issue of, let's say, how what, what OT2 to go for or what channel to advertise on. Now, the problem has gone multifold. In which screen do you advertise on? Because all, have, all of us have come from our house still here we realize that we would have seen at least on an average five to six screens where we've seen an ad, right? It could be a DOH outside your house. It could be a DOH on your, on your lift. It could, be, it could be your mobile. It could be a CT that you saw in the morning, right? So I think there is this real problem on being able to understand this multi-screen journey, how you're able to decode this, how you're able to find the right place. The right place is now replaced by the right medium, right? How you, do you find the right medium and then how do you embed that with technology, right? Obviously, the first, first go-to will be data, right? Our dear friend Sridhar before this session spoke about look at the dirt that you missed in the house, right? How do you harness all the data that you have that you know about the customer? How do you bring it together to have a single unified view, right? Because when you do that, you're able to understand not just his consumption pattern, but what he likes to read, what he likes to view, what time of the day he likes to see content, what time of the day he sees what kind of content, right? So all these things can be analyzed, right? And then obviously, how do you top that up with using each medium with that data, right? Targeting the right customer through each medium layered with this level of data. And then obviously our favorite two-letter word, AI. How do you use 
AI and Gen AI, right, to be able to analyze this and create what we call as predictive analytics, right? Uh, so think about, I mean, when we open up Netflix, right, we, there is already a content which we like, right, because that, how is that coming? There's a recommendation engine behind which is recommending that, looking at your watch history. How do we now create that ecosystem in an ad world? Imagine recommendation engine for ads, right? When the, whatever ad that you see is the ad that you were expecting, right? So those are the kind of technologies that are there. And how do we now understand customers' journey across these screens and utilize them in the most effective manner? That's, that's where the tools are being used. Fantastic. Uh, we had a panel discussion backstage before this panel discussion where, where we, you know, kind of spoke about this, you know, multiple screens and how we can bucket users into, you know, people who are at the awareness stage or consideration stage and finally on the mobile phone for the purchase. Okay. So that is something which we had an amazing discussion backstage also and now Ram Gopal has kind of explained very properly for us. Uh, sort of uh, next, uh, you know, question is to you. What is the importance of measuring and analyzing analyzing data to continuously refine marketing strategies and enhance customer satisfaction. Sure. So, I mean, you know, the entire discussion is about customer centricity. Now, to be customer centric, you need to understand them, know information about them, analyze that and, you know, get to the core insights. And therefore, that's really, really important. And I'll go back to the fact that you know, this is going to be important throughout the consumer journey, right? So first and foremost, I think it's about trying to understand what is the customer seeking. And uh, Ram just mentioned about how they are interacting with multiple platforms on multiple screens, etc., and so on and so forth. And therefore, the marketer's task becomes even more tougher, right? Because earlier it was very simple, uh, go do some market research, try to figure out what is happening out there, uh, meet some consumers, generate the data, come up with a new uh, idea, advertising or innovation, etc. Now world has changed. And, and therefore, while you continue to do some of the uh, traditional way of looking at customer and the data that you generate from there, I think it's very important to uh, use all the modern tools which are available. So while we do our traditional research, we also look at, okay, what are the subtle cues which are coming from social listening, for example, and what is it that consumers are not telling us when we are asking them, but they are telling it out there to the world, right? So I think putting those traditional ways of generating data and looking at the modern ways of data which exists, you know, which you are not seeking as a brand, but that data, multiple uh, data points exist, I think putting them together and analyzing and inciting is very, very important to first understand what really the consumer wants. And we have had so many uh, cases where, you know, we believe that a certain proposition will work in a certain way. And when we reached out to cross verify that and do final validations, we ended up with something different. The, um, and, and so that is, you know, what you do at the start. Now this again continues because when you are developing the idea, when you are uh, formalizing the idea again, you have to look at the multiple data points, multiple sources and how you build on that. And finally, once you know the, the campaign or the innovation, et cetera, or the user experience that you are creating is out there, it's very important to see how effective that is being. And therefore, how do you monitor, learn from it, build on it and make it even more customer centric. Fantastic. Uh, you talked about, you know, uh, listening, social listening, right? We're discussing backstage. Our spouses use our mobile phones in terms of encouraging social listening, right? They talk about anniversary gifts multiple times near the phone so that, you know, it shows or pops up some discounts or offers some brand. I think Akshay, you mentioned on that, right? Yeah, my wife does this, you know, it was to my shock, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you, she, what she does is she goes in front of the phone and she talks about, you know, all these uh, products and like shopping and stuff. And immediately she gets brands, you know, <laughs> uh, showing their ads and with offers and stuff like that. So I think it depends on how you use technology. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, finally, Yatnesh, I'll come to you. Uh, personalization is a key focus for brands these days, right? Hyper personalization, personalization. How do brands balance technology with the need for authentic and uh, personalized interaction with their customers? 
Okay, so I think the question has a two part, the authenticity and the personalization. Uh, I, what first I would like to say, the most of the time, how we categorize the our marketing initiative based on to the consumption, like FMCZ, automotive or pharma, media, whatever the way. But I, I think it's a better way to plan the marketing based on to the customer purchase cycle. There are the long purchase cycle, there are the short purchase cycle. I currently representing the brand which has a long purchase cycle. How the customer responds on to the long purchase cycle? They go with the intricate deliberations. They go for a contemplation. They keep evaluating on this thing. Then they take a call. So here the personalization difference what the other way in the short purchase cycle. The second is the now the this connected web has given the huge, uh, huge choice of the expansion choice. And this choice is coming with the added complexity like he mentioning Whenever they say there's so many offers started getting bombarding and all this thing. On this, how can you serve the right set of the customer with the right messaging? That's the real personalization. Otherwise, they will start taking it as a spam also. So there are the various data, methods and technologies available. Now, in the customer journey of the exploration and evaluation as a brand, what we try to do, we try to nurture their overall the journey from the beginning to the end. And in this journey, we try to learn, we try to learn from their signals what kind of the personalization they wanted. It's not like the some customer if looking something for the home interior journey, something is looking specific for certain features. Products are the common, but the message creative versioning is become so that it can become the more personalized. So it is not the product keep getting personalized, but the messaging become the personalized so that he can get the right choices at the end. So that's the way we do. And regarding the authenticity, I think uh, as a brand, we are trying to be the true to the what the customer delivery promise we are communicating and uh, we are trying to as integral to the our core brand values which we had communicated so that's the way we're trying to maintain the automation in personalization and authenticity fantastic we still have some time what i'll do is for the next uh, phase of this panel discussion i'll ask generic questions where everyone can take a step you know uh, I'll start off with uh, say Yatnesh again. Uh, how do brands reach out to digital natives and you know people, the younger generation, younger younger population through technology? Maybe for your brand or for in general. I think in our brand we try to uh, reach it to the younger generations more for the saliency purpose because they play the role of uh, supporting the choice what the other members in the family is doing it. So they may not be the decision maker in choosing the interiors, but the personal spaces, they make the choices, but they endorse what the, uh, their uh, decision makers are happening. So we try to use them, we try to engage them, but we try to engage them in their language. We try to engage them in with their way of the thinking. So it's like how the purchasing decision making is communication, but with them, there's a different level of the engagement we keep doing. Like recently, last two years back, we did the plastic free tringa. It was the one initiative. And when we did the analysis of the those who interacted, it was the most the younger generation was there. So that's the way we interact with them. Well, for us, I think uh, the task is relatively simpler than uh, uh, what Yatnesh mentioned because you know, I, I deal with brands uh, and some of those brands are targeted at younger audience or even for some of the brands which have been there, uh, you know, we are trying to recruit more and more younger audiences. And the way we do about it, go about this is by using the different platforms uh, where they are available, right? So, for example, for an ever youth, I'll uh, even go and do campaigns on Spotify because many of the target users are using Spotify. And, and I'm giving you some extreme examples because Otherwise, of course, through the various uh, media channels and uh, especially on, on digital, you can easily target them. You'd be surprised though that a uh, lot of young audiences are still uh, watching TV. Uh, they're still listening to music channels. It may be playing in the background, whatever, but uh, they do listen to it and so on and so forth. So I, I think we try to look at and especially in the smaller towns, right? So there is a mix of how the younger audiences are evolving, especially in the metros and the, you know, the mini metros, etc. Versus at the same time, how are the uh, younger audiences consuming media in, in rest of India, even rural to that extent. And we try to target them uh, where they're available. Ram? Um, I'll quote another interesting chat that I heard in one of the panels a few days ago. Uh, there's a 25 year old whom we asked that, what is the new thing that you want in a CTV, right? Uh, 
he ended up saying that I don't want to use a CTV with a remote. I don't want a remote at all. I wish CTV could have been uh, a place where I can just move my hand and the channel would change. Like that's the level of thinking that they're reaching. So what I feel is the way to re reach them is obviously um, to speak their language. That's that's super critical because they have their own language and uh, is, is what that they listen to and is that what they understand, right? And also I think the strategy with with specifically millennials and Gen Z has to be ever evolving because they do not have one taste cluster or one preference at a point of time. They will keep evolving. There is they do different things in different time of the day. They watch content at four at night. They listen to music in the morning, right? So you need to reach them at the right places again and also keep analyzing them over a period of time that how are their preferences changing and therefore reach them at the right place again and again by knowing them more. That's, that's fantastic. Really Akshay. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I kind of agree with everyone uh, who's saying and what uh, Saurabh also said. It is three things, right? Like I think uh, the technology, where they are. The second thing is the behavior, behavioral, where, where, at what time of the day, what are they doing? And third is contextual, right? Uh, I think these are the three things. If you are able to dissect and triangulate, you will find a technology, you will find some context where they go to, they would be at Roblox or like at Discord, channels, etc. Uh, at a certain point of day. So what uh, Ram is uh, talking about, I think if you just look data very closely, uh, you will be able to pinpoint uh, your customer profile, what they are doing at what point of day. I think that's, it's as simple as that. I, it's, I'm, I'm maybe sounding it simple, not as simple, but definitely Relative in that direction. Yeah. Amit. So I think, again, coming back to the same technology, I think is playing a very important role. I talked about a little bit about conversational commerce or conversational. Um, so if you see the voice assist or the way you talk to your device, everybody, everybody in the world or everybody in the country have mobile phone, right? And you can use Google assist or any way to be com able to communicate with a device. And artificial intelligence makes it possible to convert to translate into multiple languages, video to text, text to video, video to, you know, so speech, like, all, everything is possible. So it is, it is, it's, it, it's easy now through the technology to, to uh, send the, to convey the message in whatever form or whatever device, because the technology really supports uh, the consumption in whatever channel the, the customer is using. So that's, that's, uh, I think. Fantastic. Finally, Amit. Yes. I think everybody has said so much <laughs> So the question was brand, uh, how do brands uh, reach out to digital natives and younger population? See, I think uh, for me, uh, and I'll talk very generic right now because uh, not just to sound safe, but just to make more sense, I guess. So, um, as a brand, Siska, uh, you know, I'm catering to a lot of uh, different types of consumers. So, while LED is targeted at, uh, you know, the adult sort of, a, you know, customer persona, but at the same time, uh, as a brand, I'm also offering them grooming solutions, uh, mobile accessories, a lot of it, smart watches, uh, smart home solutions, which are very, very, um, you know, you know, running high on technology, etc. Um, so uh, for me, it's pretty easy to um, create that narrative. Uh, as far as LED is concerned, you know, with the help of traditional uh, channels, okay. And as far as my younger audiences are concerned, the entire journey pretty much is is online. So right from getting the uh, brand discovered to you know giving them the options to consider and finally converting them, uh, you know, either hopefully on my D2C because that's where I uh, generate the first party data or if not my platform, then maybe my partner platform, which I never gave Navajit that time when he was in Flipkart. So I think uh, that's pretty much the simple rule for us, I guess. Har jis ko tod marod ke difficult bana kar usse proof karna zaruri nahi I think life is not that difficult. Simple ra to bhi kaam hota hai. Fantastic. Do you have time for one more question? Can I? 
just one question. Let it be very short. Uh, I think this is very pertinent because you know we are at that stage in life where we learned so much, but we are also unlearning. We are learning again. So as marketers, as digital experts, how important is it for each of you to be uh, to learn, unlearn things, and maybe learn again? Uh, I'll start from Amit from that side. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to answer this honestly because, uh, you know, back in those days when I did my uh, formal education, you know, in marketing and I believe that now no more padhai likhai, picha chhoot gaya hai, now you're certified, you know, marketeer sorts and sorted hai abhi life. And I think um, everything was proved wrong uh, gradually uh, as we kept on moving ahead, um, you know, because things changed, uh, you know, uh, technology came in, uh, and so on and so forth. And I realized that uh, unless and until you learn and you know relearn, uh, I think the bigger fear factor for me is that I'm not going to be relevant. Jo meri younger team hoti hai, jo digital karti hai, graphics karti hai, digital uh, e-commerce karti hai, they have their different aspirations, they talk different language. So for me, I think it's about trying to catch the train before the train leaves the platform. So I think, uh, you know, the idea is, you know, to become that Shah Rukh Khan and, and get onto that train and get the Simran. Awesome. We'll keep it short in maybe two, three lines. Uh, I, I think agility is the key. So in, we are in an agile world and, and the technology is changing. So there is no, I don't think we have any option. We have to unlearn and learn. Yeah. No, gotcha. I think my entire thesis as an individual and even as an organization is about learning and unlearning, right? Completely. And it makes sense, right? Technology is moving so fast. Uh, like, you know, when, like uh, how Amit was saying, when we were, you know, in our early years, technology shifts used to happen, if you remember, in seven, eight years time, right? Or probably 10 years time. Uh, before that, probably in decades, uh, technology shifts used to happen. Now technology shifts are happening in like 18 months time, 12 months time, uh, new things are coming up. So if you are not uh, learning new things, unlearning the you know past way of doing things, you'll be completely irrelevant. So completely, I, I you know, I believe in this. Uh, Fantastic. Lam. It's super critical, I also feel. I mean, it is, uh, it is the only way to say relevant. Because I think uh, as I speak more to the younger generation, I feel unless I unless I read as as much as they know, I will not be able to speak to them. There will come a point where we will not be able to speak to them. And that's that's a difficult phase, right? So it's super critical to learn and unlearn and stay always relevant. In fact, I have a 10 year old who teaches me every day. Uh -huh. ki, uh, new things, ki, you know what, this is how it happens. Roblox, you know, this is how you play, right? Like, so it's super critical how they teach you. Nice, sort of. Yeah, I don't know what part of the answer you got. I guess nothing. So I was just just trying to simplify it. See what you know, because otherwise learning and learning, it can be a lot of jargon and we don't really uh, synthesize and absorb uh, what it really means. What it really means is don't get hooked up to anything you know, right? And that is essentially because of what Ram also mentioned, the world around us is so dramatically changing. So what may have worked in the past may not necessarily work in the future. And therefore the only thing, uh, you should do uh, deliberately and and, and uh, based on plan of actions is how do you move forward? What do you know? But what is the data uh, showing you? And therefore, is it worth at least a try? I, I think that's important. As long as you're doing that, forget about unlearning, etc. You know, because you will unlearn in the process. You don't have to try and unlearn. Finally, Apnesh. I think uh, if the technology is changing, so our customers are also changing. And if we have to be into the marketing place, so we have to learn. And once you will learn the new things, automatically something will go on that. So that's the way. Very simple. Awesome. So uh, I think uh, the thing is uh, about staying relevant, both as individuals, both as digital experts, and also for, the, for our brands. Um, so yes, uh, I think we are done. We are slightly you know, over time, but that's okay. I did not get a kind of a, you know, of a 
uh, thing from you. So, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for the engaging panel discussion. Hopefully, it added to some knowledge.